This is a 2007 Town Car Signature. We bought it last spring. Um, I've done quite a bit of work on it. I did changed all the blend door motors. I uh, did some home handyman body filler kind of boogie fixes. My goal with body work is always to make it look better than it did. I never go for perfection because I'm not capable of it. The uh, goal is to have a car that we can drive comfortably for a long time. It's relatively low kilometers, uh, it's below 200. And uh, I've owned more town cars in my life than the total of all other cars combined. So I'm no expert on them, but I do have some school of hard knocks. The uh, purpose of this video is the rear defrost. Lincoln calls it the heated window glass. But the rear defrost wasn't working. Of course, we didn't discover that until it got cold. Um, and I think I've isolated what the problem is. Uh, you won't see this video if it turns out that I'm not right. So my suspicion is that it's what Lincoln calls, or Ford, I guess, calls an antenna isolator module. And I'm going to show you where that is. This thing is not real well documented. And I'll show you the basic troubleshooting that I went through. So I got the hood up on the car here. The, um, the relay that runs the, the rear defrost is that guy right there. And he comes off of a 40 amp fuse. I'd have to check to confirm, but I believe it's that one right there. It's in your owner's manual. So the 40 amp fuse powers the relay and then the when the relay turns on it actually powers another one of these little guys. I don't remember which one but again it's in your manual. So the power goes through this guy, through the relay and then through one of these to run your heated mirrors and it goes directly from the relay to the rear window glass. Now we'll go back to the, the back of the car and I'll show you the offending module and then I'll show you some troubleshooting steps that you can do here at the relay. So I've taken both of the trim panels off on the quarter panel or I don't know what you call this area up here where the shoulder belt attaches. That's the passenger side connection for the grid. You can actually get to the grid connections without removing these trim panels, but you can't get to this little guy unless you remove the passenger side trim. You got to take the passenger side trim and then the parcel shelf trim out. Now the other side is more or less the same. I don't know how well you can see that, but that's the the uh, I guess that's the grid connection there. So then if you examine the grid, there's it's continuous on that side. It's there's a like a bus bar on this side and then the little resistance wires run across the window. There's also another connection up in behind the trim there. Uh, it's hard to get this thing to focus on the on the trim, but that vertical line on the on the uh, heater grid goes up to a a third connection that you can just kind of see. Uh, so there, that's the third connection, and it's at the top of that vertical grid line on the rear window, rear defrost grid.
So these are just a standard Ford relay. I've got the one I pulled out of the car right here and a generic that I keep on the shelf all the time right here. And if you look close, you can see they're, they're not identical. The, the one on the right, the one that came out of the car, has four pins. The one on the left has five pins. But they, they, do, they perform identically. The, the difference is that the one in the car missing the center pin has no normally closed option. The one on the left, my generic one off the shelf, has a normally closed option. So the way they work, um, you provide hot power to this pin that's set at an odd, at the different, the, one, the pin that's different. That's the control power, the always on power that you want to control. You put, you run a circuit through a switched circuit between this pin and this pin. And when you energize that circuit, the coil inside will close and you'll have power at the opposite side. Now on the generic version, same thing. This would be your always hot pin. You run a circuit through these two that are parallel to each other. And once that, once that coil is energized, once that circuit's active, power will flow from this, this pin across to this pin. Now the fifth pin is a normally closed. So this, these two outside pins are normally open. Energize the coil, they close. This fifth pin is a normally open pin. So at a resting state with the switch turned off, if you've got power here on this one that's at the different angle, you will also have power here in the middle, normally closed. So they're exactly the same and you can plug this relay into the socket in the car where this one came out of and even though it's got an extra pin it doesn't matter, it's not used. So we will first confirm that we have all the power working in the car. I'll just run a, a simple test light and we'll check. So we should have power on this pin and one of these two side to side pins. So looking at the socket here we look, here's the, we'll get the camera over here so you can see better. Here's the camera, or the pin that's at the funny angle. And there we've got power on the pin that's contrary to the rest of them. And then we've also got power over here. So now we can check those two, there's nothing there. So what normally happens is we have to energize between here and here, and that will pull the the um, pull the relay closed, pull the coil closed, and then that will transfer the power that's already present here over to here. Now, if you look on the on the vehicle schematic, you'll see that this this pin is then subsequently connected to one of these fuses. I don't remember which one, and from there it flows to the heated rear view mirrors and this pin is also connected directly to that wire that I showed you dangling loose at the back that I disconnected from the little module. So the other thing that you that we can do, I'm not going to do the test because it's I haven't got enough hands to set everything up, but if you check right now for continuity from this pin to ground you won't get it. It'll be, it's an extremely high resistance right now to ground. However, once you turn the rear defrost on at the EATC automatic temperature control in the in the cabin, as soon as you turn rear defrost on, this pin will go to ground. So the way they're controlling this is they've got power here, power here all the time, and in order to turn on the rear defrost, they lower this to ground, power flows through there, coil closes, and then power can flow from here across to here and then from here it'll go to either your rear view mirrors or to the rear defrost grid. So now I'm going to go back to the to the back and we're going to check the other end of this wire and we're going to find that there's nothing there because the the um, rear grid is turned off in the cabin then we'll turn it on and this should come live at the at the back. OK, 
Okay, so we're grounded to the case of the little isolator module. We've got the test light stuck in the connector, which you probably can't see because it's so bloody dark in here. But we got no test light. That's because the dash control is off. Okay, to do this, obviously you have to stick the relay back in up under the hood. I forgot to do that, so your light can't light unless the relay is there to send the power back here. So we got power appearing back here on this little connector, wherever it is right there. Normally that connector would be attached right there and then it would flow up there into this little module and from there get split one side would go to power the grid one side would allow the the ground to come back and somehow this little module prevents radio interference is my understanding of its function anyway it's not working and like I said right now if you do continuity you'll get continuity from that wire to ground from that wire to ground and from the input to ground so that can't work <laughs> 